Ready to see some amazing experiments? This is the Operation Arch Poo Factory. We're going to show you how your incredible body works. Just don't try anything you see here at home. Chris, can I trouble you for a favour? I need to borrow something of yours for an experiment. Is that OK? Yeah, that's fine. Whatever. Hang on, trouble me for what? Some of your blood? You've got eight pints of it. Absolutely not. I'm using mine at the moment. Yeah, but this is a once-in-a-lifetime chance to get it on telly. Ooh, this does sound good, actually. Great. Now, remember, we can only do this because we're doctors. Now, you might think I'm being brave with this needle, but you've got to remember that needles don't hurt unless you think they hurt, and I don't think it hurts. Nice work, Zand. I have to say, though, for all the vital jobs it does, like carrying oxygen around my body, it's not much to look at, is it? I mean, it's just sort of red and gloopy, right? Wrong! It is much to look at, but only if you put it in one of these. This is a centrifuge machine. This is my centrifuge machine. I've been looking for that. Stop interrupting. We're trying to do an experiment. By spinning Chris's blood around at high speed, the centrifuge machine will separate the different parts that make up blood so we can see them. And ten minutes later... So there we go. Now, this top liquid layer is called the plasma, and it carries nutrients around your body and also carries waste material that your body wants to get rid of. And underneath the plasma, you can see this red layer, and that is made up of red blood cells, or erythrocytes, and these carry oxygen all around your body. And also in there are the platelets, and those are the cells that help you form blood clots. And right between these two layers, you can see a little bit of cloudiness. Those are white blood cells to fight infection. Well, there we go, Chris. We're all done with that now. Why are you giving me this? I only needed to borrow it. I'm a man of my word. So you've seen what your blood is made up of. But do you know where your blood comes from? Well, we're going to show you. Gross alert coming up. Amazingly, your blood comes from your bones. If you thought your bones were just solid, hard, white things that kept you standing up, then think again, because there's more to bones than that. Now, to demonstrate this, I've got a pig's femur. That's the big bone that you've got in your thigh. And we're going to open this one up to see how bones make blood. The femur is one of the strongest bones in the body, so we're going to need some very specialist kit to cut it open. Exactly. Right, Zand. Or we could use a medical femur saw. It's the only thing that doctors ever, ever use to cut bones. OK, we'll do it your way. It's time to saw open some bone. Chris the saw. Get ready, because this is going to be a bit messy. This is the inside of a pig's femur. And right here, this squishy stuff is red bone marrow. Now, it's the red bone marrow that makes all your blood cells. In fact, every single day, your bone marrow makes 500 billion blood cells. Busy. Now, the inside of your bones looks like this. It's pink with a lot of red marrow. But as you get older, your marrow starts to turn yellow. Chris, the yellow bone marrow, coming right up. This is the inside of an adult cow's leg bone. This yellow bone marrow is a much lighter colour. It's very soft and squidgy, and that's because it's mostly fat cells. And this is what your mum and dad's bone marrow looks like. And that's because your body needs more blood when it's growing a lot. But as you get older and you don't have so much growing to do, some of the red marrow, which makes blood, turns to yellow marrow, which is basically a fat store. So you have more red marrow than a grown-up. But how does blood get from inside the bones to flowing around your body? Well, we're going to show you. Come and have a good look at this. Right there, between that bit of bone marrow and the hard bit of bone, is a blood vessel. So that's coming right inside your bones to pick up all that nice new blood being made by the marrow every single day. How cool is that? So we've shown you that inside, your bones are amazing blood-making factories and veins come right inside the bones to pick up that blood. 
And we've seen that blood is made up of different things, all of which have different jobs in your body. You know, Chris, I did have a sense that that chainsaw was a bit over the top. Did you, Zand? I could feel it in my bones. <laughs> I'll have to be careful, though. And I'm not taking any chances. Because I'm getting this sample from someone who's extremely dangerous. He doesn't look very dangerous, son. I'm not talking about Nick. I'm talking about the saw-scale viper in front of him. One of the most deadly snakes in the world. Don't worry, we're not hurting the snake. Dr Nick works in a venom research unit and is an expert in snake handling. Like we've shown you before, the snake is being milked so we can get a sample of his venom. It has to be done by an expert, as one bite would kill you by clotting your blood. Here you go, Dan. Right, thanks very much. Back to the lab. Time to make our very own blood clot. Chris, I'm back. And what I've got here is a fresh sample of saw-scaled viper venom. What I'm going to do is add it to this beaker and then we're going to mix it with your blood sample. Your blood is liquid at the start. See how runny the blood is? Blood's just mixing with the venom. And I just swirl it. Oh, yeah. look at that. That's really good. The clot has started to form. That This blood now oh. is a single lump of jelly. Looks like pudding. We've made an enormous blood clot. I've never seen this happen before. A big blood clot like this in your body would be very dangerous, as it could block one of your arteries. But small blood clots are extremely useful, and your body makes them all the time. They do amazing work stopping you bleeding if you cut yourself or you graze your knee. But your body isn't full of viper venom, so what is it that makes your blood clot? We can see the cells that make a clot if we have a look at some blood under this microscope. Here we have your red and your white blood cells, but we're interested in these tiny dots. Those are platelets. They're so small, in fact, that in just one drop of blood, there'll be about 15 million platelets. And to show you how amazing they are, we need to head outside to supersize them. I'm going to demonstrate how those little platelets stop you bleeding. Imagine that the tub I'm sitting in is the inside of one of your blood vessels and the water is your blood and I am the coagulation system. They call me Captain Coagulation. Do they? Where's the cut then? Well, if you have a look at the tab right down there, Chris. What? This one here, the one that says don't touch. That's right. OK, what, I just pull this, do I? Just give it a pull. Sir, sir, you're bleeding and I can't stop it! Don't panic, Chris. I am the coagulation system and the first thing your body does when you're bleeding is constrict the blood vessel. As soon as your body detects a cut, it makes the opening in your blood vessel smaller so that less blood can flow through. Well, that is slower, but you're still bleeding, Zahn. What should we do now? Just hand me the bucket of platelets. What? This? Exactly. Now, when you're constricting the blood vessel, your body sends platelets and sticks them around the hole. And these will slow the flow of blood even more. Now, Chris, pass me the fibrin to hold the platelets in the right position. This is a protein called fibrin. It forms fibres that help stick the platelets together. There you go, Chris. With the blood flow slowed right down, we're ready for the final stage of the process. Pour in the clotting proteins. Your blood uses proteins and chemical reactions to thicken and clot. This is coagulation. Look at this one. The coagulation proteins have set into a thick goo and the bleeding has stopped. Another triumph for Captain Coagulation. So we've shown you what a massive blood clot looks like. And we've looked at how tiny platelets clot your own blood with the help of fibrin and proteins. Come on, Zahn. Time to get out of the bath. We've got to clear up. Not so fast, Chris. I heard about another cut upstream. Captain Coagulation to the rescue! What do you mean, upstream? Are we falling